Today we're in the test kitchen showing you how to upgrade classic mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes are one of the ultimate comfort foods. They deserve to be a spotlight, not just a side. They're also such a great vehicle to add flavor. You can really infuse it with anything you want. You have that base already made. Why not take it in a different direction? Do something a little bit less expected. Let's make some mashed potatoes. Hamelie goat is like the pinnacle of a cheesy mashed potato. It's super, super full of cheese to the point that it has like an almost cheese pull like texture to it. So we are starting with a pot of boiled Yukon gold potatoes and a couple of garlic cloves that we boiled in with the potatoes. That like raw garlic edge is gone and you're left with this like creamy, alliumy bite. So first thing I'm gonna do, and you could do this while your potatoes were boiling, is grate the cheese. This is Swiss and Fontina, both like very, very meltable, um, which is what you want here because you really want it to fully incorporate into one gloopy, cheesy, potato-y mass. There is no bad thing that happens when you add cheese. It just gets better. The butter and the cream is gonna go all in one fell swoop. We're gonna add just about half of that, save it in case we need the rest, and we're gonna add all this butter. We are going to use the hand masher, proving that that fancy dish that you might see on a menu at a friend's restaurant can be achievable at home, even if you don't have the fancy equipment. Okay, off we go. I'm adding a little bit of salt, and we're gonna turn our heat on very low and get to mashing. Okay, we're most of the way mashed, so I'm gonna start adding cheese, just like a handful at a time, and then incorporating as we go. All right, we're gonna add a little bit more heavy cream with each addition of this cheese, just to keep things moving. This dish is not for the faint of heart. The point is decadence, the point is richness. So don't be afraid. This is like a workout for sure, but it's worth it at the end. Oh my gosh, you can see the cheese is like starting to fully melt and pull. Fully incorporated cheese to the point where you don't really know what's potato and what's cheese. I want to be very clear so I'm not like barred from entering France. This is not traditional palmelly goat. You can see like little chunks of potatoes in here. I'm okay with that. This is the potato of my dreams and it has some chunks. But it is also so stretchy, so cheesy, so luxurious. Oh my God. You can see it's like very glisteny and it's cohesive. Despite the like little bits of potato that you can see, which I think is good because it reminds you that you're eating food and you're not eating mush. Like, oh, like look at this. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's like a joke. That's no fucking joke. <laughs> it's just so cheesy, so unctuous. Potatoes dream of a day where they get to grow up and be this. Classic mashed potatoes are great. I am most excited when I have leftover mashed potatoes, not just to reheat them, but to do something different with them. I wanted to make a kind of like a riff on a croquetta, which is a fried potato ball. Crispy outside, soft, creamy inside. So I'm gonna start with um, two cups of leftover mashed potato. I've got some sharp cheddar cheese, grated parm, some chives, just a touch of flour and a couple of egg yolks just to help with binding. A lot of salt, like kind of a dumb amount of salt and pepper just before I start mixing. Lucky spoon. Yeah, so I'm just doing like a generous tablespoon. So these I'm gonna chill. Everything's gonna firm up and they're gonna resist breakage. I think you could go at least an hour so these have chilled. Season the dry elements of your dredge, which consists of flour, egg, and breadcrumb. Dredging's a pain. Sometimes you just need to do it, you know? Even if it's Wednesday night and you're trying to find like, you know, three bowls you haven't like already used for cereal that day. All right, we have a thin but even coating. We are going to the stove. We're gonna throw in a tester, all right? We're going uh, no thermometer on this one. 
the fact that we've got like bubbling right away is good. It's a good sign. Let's throw in a few more. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, we might be oozing. No big deal. Just keep going. As long as the mashed potato is hot, cheese gets melty, exterior is browned, like that's it. You're done. Get them out. So these are my leftover mashed potato fried potato balls. I don't want to besmirch the name of croquetta by calling these croquettas. It's pretty delicious. What it's delivering, I think, is the original intention, which is like crispy and kind of shattering exterior. And then super oozy melted interior. This is just like fun. Like you get to play. That turns a classic mashed potato into something even more compelling. I'm going to be making a crab fat mashed potato. Who doesn't love crab fat? I chose this because people should be eating more crab fat. This is a Dungeness. The crab fat you're gonna find actually located in the top of the shell. You can see there's some juice coming from the crab that's gonna be part of the crab fat. I'm gonna break the crab. So you can see as I open, this part right here is crab fat. I would watch my parents actually break the crab open, take rice and stick it just directly into the shell. And they would always tell me that that was the best part of the crab. Um, now we have the body of the crab. You can see with the body, it's broken up by the legs. You kind of want to approach it by section. Um, if the crab is not cooked well, the meat tends to stick to the shell um, and it makes it much harder to peel. We have our crab meat separated and now we're actually going to make the crab fat oil that we're going to add to our mashed potatoes to really like infuse that flavor. I'm actually going to add some uh, oil that's been infused with garlic. These garlic have been confit. I think the garlic stays nice and sweet when you do this. So I'm gonna head over to my stove top and we're gonna integrate the fat with the oil and kind of render it down. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and season my crab fat with a little bit of Johnny's seasoning salt. Johnny's seasoning salt has like paprika, black peppers, garlic salt, regular salt. Oh my God. So good, so rich. I am going to make a, just a really quick uh, crab salad. I've got some vegan mayo. I'm just gonna add a nice tablespoon and a half, a little bit of mustard, some of these scallions, some Johnny's. Add a little bit of lemon, just for some acidity to balance that kind of fattiness of the crab and the, the vegan mayo. I think it's gonna go really well with the rustic mashed potatoes that we have. I've got some cooked Yukon potatoes here. I prefer to use a fork as to not make my potatoes too creamy so that there's still texture. As you can see, it's very rustic. I'm just gonna add my crab fat mixture. Add some of our garlic oil in here too. Just a tiny squeeze of lemon. Plating, and then I'm gonna take my crab mixture and put this on top. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that garlic oil and drizzle. I'm gonna top it with some just fresh scallions. Here we have our crab fat mashed potatoes with a delicious crab salad. Mmm. The crab tastes super fresh. There's no like flavors that are competing with it. The garlic confit is super creamy and inside the salad and in the potatoes and the scallions just add a nice kind of fresh bite to it. Mmm. There's something that's so beautiful when you like honor those traditions or those recipes that you grew up with and seeing them in a different way could be ways that your friends and family can enjoy too. My personal preference with mashed potatoes is I like a smooth consistency that's riddled with like some chunks and lumps. I don't want it to be like baby food or I got no teeth food, you know, like I want it to, I, I don't mind a little, a little nugget of, of potato. Some people put it through a food mill, or through the ricer, all right? I like to do it with the old wooden spoon, just like mom used to do, you know? Smash it up, inconsistent. Yeah, I'm gonna make a little bit of a, a, a version of a mashed potato I like to do. I'm taking a little recipe out of my book um, where I like to take some roasted garlic, all right? You just cut the little tops off like that. I like to drizzle a little olive oil on there, put it in foil, roast it in the oven until uh, it gets nice and 
nice and caramelized and, and smooth like that, all right? That's what we're looking for. It's delicious. You can put this on anything. Today, we're gonna put it in some butter. Look at that. Kinda like doing that, too. I'm a garlic guy, some of you know that, and I'm gonna put two heads in there. And then we got, I'd say, what? Tablespoon and a half of, of white miso. And that's gonna add that nice little, that little weird umami, kinda keep you, this is a little different, but it's delicious. It's got a little bit of salt in it, actually quite a bit. And we're just gonna mash that together like that, nice. And this is pre-softened butter, all right? That's a pro move right there. We're hot here. I'm gonna add the butter, miso, and garlic mixture right into my taters there. So there we go. Cream's cold, that's not gonna help in our, our mashing procedure. So we're gonna heat that up. Gentle, we don't wanna go scorching it or nothing like that, burning the bottom, but we wanna get that nice and warm. And in the meantime, that butter's already melted, and I'm just gonna get that party going. Mash these up a little bit. I don't wanna go nuts, I'm just gonna get some of them, all right? Just taking the chill off of the old cream there. I'm just gonna add a little bit. All right, we're done. Mmm. To me, mashed potatoes needs to have more than one texture. You can see there's still some of those nice little potato chunks in there. A little chive action, and that's it, you know? A little chunky garlic miso mashed potato. Mmm. The garlic is just all the way throughout it. And that miso just gives it that kind of, it's a subtle, nutty, you almost like wouldn't know it was miso. It kind of hides pretty well. It keeps you guessing, which I really like. And there we have it, a new version, a little twist, a little Brad take on a classic mashed potato. Let's talk about potatoes. First and foremost, my favorite thing on the planet that are creamy and delicious. But the challenge is, can you have creamy, dairy-free mashed potatoes? And I've got some news for you folks, you can. And we're gonna pair that with a really decadent umami blast poutine-style gravy. I want it to feel like it's melting in your mouth. So that's where you have to incorporate the fat and the creaminess of full-fat oat milk. It also has more of a neutral flavor profile. And what I'm gonna do is just start mashing and I'll keep slowly adding in more milk until I get the desired consistency. We're just gonna work in some more olive oil because we want that fat incorporated into our potatoes. That's what's gonna make them shine. Black pepper, add our oregano, and we have some garlic and onion powder. I think we're, we're ready to move on to our gravy now. We have a saucepan situation, medium heat. We're gonna add our olive oil, our garlic, I personally like to add in my spices while I'm toasting my garlic because I feel like it opens up the flavor a little bit. Okay, our garlic's slightly golden. I'm just going to add a mix of Baby Bella and shiitake mushrooms here. A little bit of white wine to deglaze the pan. You'll notice once the mushrooms start to cook, it draws the water out of them. And that's kind of one of the signs you can use to tell that your mushrooms are cooked and softened. I'm gonna increase the heat a little bit and what we're gonna do is add in some veggie stock. So now I'm just gonna add our flour, allow the sauce to thicken and lower the temperature and then we'll add our cornstarch slurry which is just gonna create a very nice thickened gravy. Yeah, now, now we're talking. That's the texture I was looking for. It drips at a slower pace. Time to plate. I was just at the Renaissance Fair. This is definitely one of those like ancient weapons that <laughs> It's really creamy. I'm like quite happy with how this turned out. Can't have poutine without cheese curds. So we'll just add some of these vegan mozzarella bits right on top. I'm just gonna spoon that gravy and that's gonna melt our cheese curds. Oh my God, mm. hallelujah. We're gonna top with a little bit of parsley without further ado. The mashed potatoes just like melt in your mouth and the gravy is like rich and creamy. Do it up with your real cheese curds <laughs> and enjoy poutine style mashed potatoes, baby. And you've got yourself a delicious upgrade. A great mashed potato is very personal. They're also a great dish to add flavors from all different kinds of cultures, which is what I'm doing today. We use potatoes a lot in India, and I thought that adding a tarka on mashed potatoes would 
go super well just because the potatoes are so creamy. The curry leaves are going to add some crunchy uh, and lemony texture to it. And mashed potatoes are the perfect vehicle for that. So I have my potato ricer here and I'm just going to add a few pieces in there. The ricer is, it's perfect. You don't have anything left over in there. You're working harder, you're not working smarter when you're trying to mash potatoes with a fork. Here they are perfectly riced. So we're gonna go over there and heat up our cream and garlic and butter and then bring it back here. Adding the garlic, the cream. I'm gonna pour half of this first and then I wanna make sure there's like enough garlic going into this and see how I feel about the consistency. I wanna live in, in this bowl of mashed potatoes. Mm. That's really good. We're ready for the tarka. Tarka is the tempering of whole or ground spices in any kind of fat and you wanna kind of bloom the spices until they're nice and crackly and fragrant. I have my heat stove at medium high. I'm gonna pour in the oil. And you wanna be working fast when you're doing a tarka. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of hing, mustard seeds, cumin, some green chilies, and finally, curry leaves. So, oh, okay, not that bad. Once they start to crackle, it means your spices are getting there. Okay, I think this is ready for our mashed potatoes. The tarka is ready, the mashed potatoes are ready. I think it's time to let them meet. And we're gonna get a little bit of everything. Flavorful oil, some curry leaves, chilies in here. That's good. That's really good. The curry leaves add a nice like crunch and fresh citrusy flavor to it. The mashed potatoes are super creamy and garlicky. You get some crunch and smokiness from the cumin seeds, a little bit heat from the chilies and mustard seeds. So I think I'm gonna make this <laughs> this holiday season. Terrible. The slate like doesn't wanna drop. Huh. Luckily, when you work with bread, you know where the socket set is kept. Nope, too small. Ooh, did you feel that? 